Welcome everybody. We're going to continue in section 12.4 today in which we're talking about the vector equation of a line. In particular, what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be teaching you how to determine the intersection of two lines if the lines actually do it or if the intersection actually does exist. In other words, if the lines do intersect one another. All right, so given vector equations of lines in particular, we're going to determine whether two lines intersect one another and where they intersect one another. Now, I want to start this process without vector equations and then show you how to do the exact same thing with vector equations. I've graphed two lines here on the screen, and you see the equations of those two lines. And I want to show you how you determine where the intersection of two lines is if you're just given the equations of the lines. And quite simply, especially if they're both written in slope-intercept form, all you've got to do to determine where these two lines intersect is you've got to set their equations equal to one another, right? If 1 half x plus 4 and negative 1 fourth x plus 4 are both equal to y, that means they've got to be equal to one another where the lines intersect. So let's make this equation by simply setting the two y's equal to one another. 1 half x plus 4 is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 4. And then we'll solve. Now, I'm going to get rid of all the fractions first, so I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD, which is going to be 4. And there's the result of multiplying everything by 4. And then we get our constants and our variable terms on opposite sides of the equation. We end up finding out that the x coordinate for the point of intersection is 0. Now, you can tell that because I gave you the graph that the x coordinate would be 0. And then to find the y coordinate, we can just plug in that x coordinate into either equation. You can see I plugged in 0 into each equation and figure out what the y1 and the y2 are, and they both are equal to 4. So, for each of these equations, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 4, that means they do intersect, and they intersect at the point 0, 4, just as you can tell from the graph. Well, what if these equations had been given to us in vector form instead of slope-intercept form? I've again given you the exact same two lines, so we already know they intersect, and we already know they intersect at the point 0, 4 but I've given you the vector equation. Now, remember the way you make a vector equation is you pick an initial point and make a position vector out of it. So the point negative four, two, and then you make the direction vector. This thing goes right two units for every one unit that it goes up. So that's how I came up with that equation. And then here I just said the initial point was one zero and then the direction was negative one, four. All right, and just like I did whenever I had the slope intercept forms, what I'm going to do to determine if and where these lines intersect is I'm just going to set the two equations equal to one another. I'm going to set R1 equal to R2, which gives us this. Now, the key to what we're trying to accomplish here is going to lie in finding out whether there's a value of T and S that would make these two equations equal to one another. All right, if that value does exist, then these lines intersect, and we can find the intersection. If there is no such value for s and t, then that would mean these lines are parallel to one another, because in two dimensions, that's the only choice. Now, we happen to know that these lines can't be parallel to one another, because their directions are not scalar multiples of one another. 2, 1 is not a scalar multiple of negative 1, 4. So we already know that there's going to be a value of s and t, that will make these two equations equal to one another. And we're going to find it now. All right. Now, on the left side of the equation, I'm going to go ahead and add the two vectors that you see right here. And that'll look this way. You'll get negative 4 plus 2t for the x components. And then you'll get 2 plus 1t for the y components. And then... Adding the two vectors on our right side, we'll get 1 plus s times negative 1, so 1 minus s for the x components, and we'll get 0 plus 4s, or just 4s, for the y components. And now what we need to do is set the x components equal to one another, and set the y components equal to one another. And it makes a system of equations for us that looks this way. Now solve that system of equations how you will. I'm going to use the substitution method by getting t by itself in the second equation and then plugging that in place of t in the first equation. You see I made it so that t was equal to 4s minus 2. And then I took that first equation and replaced the t with 4s minus 2. And now I'm going to solve that equation for s. 
and that will give me this 8s minus 8 equals 1 minus s, so 9s equals 9, and s is equal to 1. And now we need to find the corresponding value of t by plugging s back into here, and we get t is equal to 2. All right, and then just to double check, let's say that we plugged in 2 for t in this first equation. Well, that would tell us that r1 is equal to negative 4 plus 4, that's 0. And then 2 plus 2, that's 4. That means that the point 0, 4 is on that line r1. And then if we plug in s, positive 1, for s, we're going to get 1 plus negative 1, which is 0. 0 plus 1 times 4 is 4. That tells us that both of these lines have the point 0, 4. And so that's where they intersect, is at the point 0, 4. All right, so using the vector equation, it works basically the same way as if you're using the slope-intercept form of an equation. Now that's for two dimensions. We also need to be able to do this with three dimensions, and so let's take a look at that. Um, one of the things we need to talk about is that there are actually three options for what two lines can do in three dimensions. They're not just intersecting or parallel like they are in two dimensions. Although, if two lines are in a three-dimensional space, they can intersect, that is an option. And they can be parallel. But just because two lines don't intersect doesn't mean they have to be parallel. And so let me show you examples of what I'm talking about here. Let's suppose that I looked at this line AB and I wanted to find something that doesn't intersect it. Well, line DC, for example, would be a line that doesn't intersect line AB. Now, you see how those two lines are coplanar to one another? And so if two lines happen to be coplanar and they don't intersect, that means that they're parallel to one another. Or another way that we can put it is that those lines are going exactly the same direction. Exactly the same direction. And if two lines are going exactly the same direction and they don't intersect, then they're going to be parallel to one another. However, it's possible to find a line that does not intersect line AB, but also goes a different direction. So let's take, for instance, line... CG. The line CG is never going to intersect that line AB, but they're clearly going different directions. This one's kind of going forward and back. This one's going up and down. And when two lines don't intersect, but they're not going the same direction either, because they're not in the same plane, that means that those lines are skew lines. And so that's a third relationship that we've got to keep in mind whenever we're dealing with lines in three dimensions is that they can be skew in addition to being intersecting or parallel lines. And then how do you know that they're parallel versus skew? Well, it's basically what, is, what I just described. Parallel lines don't intersect and they go the same direction, which I'll put in quotes because they could actually go exactly the opposite direction and still be parallel um, whenever we're talking about vectors, right? And then skew lines don't intersect, but they go different directions. And just to put the same direction and different direction thing into vector speak, um, if two vectors have the same direction, that means their directions are, or if they're parallel, their directions are scalar multiples. For example, if two lines had the direction vectors that I've drawn right here, they would be parallel to one another because if you multiply everything in this first, first vector by negative 1.5, it gives you this second vector. So there is a scalar multiple that you can use to make this vector into this one. And how did I figure it out? It was negative 1.5, by the way. Because negative 6 divided by 4 is negative 1.5. Negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 1.5. And 9 divided by negative 6 is negative 1.5. All right, skew lines and, in fact, intersecting lines, that will not happen for all right, well, we need to have an example then where we determine if two lines intersect, they're parallel, or they're skew. And if they intersect, we're going to find their intersection. Well, let's start off with the whole parallel thing. We want to compare their direction vectors, of course, in order to determine if they're parallel. And we'd like to see, is there some kind of, or are those directions scalar multiples of one another? All right, so is 1, 0, 2 a scalar multiple of 3, 1, 1? And it turns out that they're not, right? I can just see if they have a common ratio, and 3 divided by 1 is not the same as 1 divided by 0 
or one divided by two. So those directions are not scalar multiples. We already know that the lines are not parallel. Now they still might be skew and they still might intersect. So we got to determine that. And the way that we're going to determine if they intersect or are skew is we're going to see is there a value of t and of s that would make these two equations equal to one another. And the only way to find that out is to set r1 equal to r2. So let's do it. All right, now we're going to be able to make three equations out of this out of setting these two linear equations equal to one another because we'll be able to make an equation with the x components, the y components, and the z components. Let's simplify both sides of the equation into single vectors in order to make this a little bit easier. On the left side, that's going to give us 2 plus t, and then negative 1 plus t times 0 is just negative 1, and negative 3 plus t times 2 is negative 3 plus 2t. All right, then on the right side, we're going to have 7 minus 3s. We're going to have 0 minus s, so just negative s. And then we're going to have 2 minus s times 1, so 2 minus s. All right, now I'm hoping that you see that the easiest equation to start with here is going to be this middle one, because we can figure out that s is equal to 1 pretty quickly from there. And now what we'd like to do is see that if s is equal to 1, will t be equal to the same thing in all of the equations? Now, there's only two equations that actually have a t. So let's take a look at those equations, the top and bottom ones. You can see I've taken each equation and replaced s with 1. And let's see if we get the same value of t for each of them. So here we'll have 2 plus t is equal to 4, so t would be equal to 2. And then in the next equation, we have negative 3 plus 2t equals 1, so again, 2t equals 4, and t is equal to 2. All right, so it looks like for each row, the x, y, and z row in these two equations, that if we use t equals 2 and s equals 1, that it will give us the same thing. And I'm just going to verify that. Let's take the first equation r1 and replace t with 2. All right, finding r1 of 2. And when t equals 2, we said that the line r1 would pass through the point, let's see, 2 plus 2, so 4, negative 1 plus 0, and negative 3 plus 4. And then let's see if R2 passes through the same thing for S is equal to 1. All right, and indeed you're going to see that they do come out to the same place, I believe. We're going to have 7 minus 1 times 3. 7 minus 3, that's 4. 0 minus 1, so negative 1. And then 2 minus 1. And so that's going to be 1 as well. Our, well, that's going to be 1. So, we found a value of t and of s that made both equations go through exactly the same point. That means that the lines intersect. They're not skew. If we could not find a value of s and t that did this right here, they would have been skew. But that means they intersect, and they intersect at, at this point right here, 4, negative 1, 1. That's parallel lines, perpen oh, not perpendicular, but parallel lines, skew lines, and intersecting lines for you, and how you determine which they are using the vector equation of a line. Thanks for watching, guys.